Yeah. Everybody turned on, ready to roll? Coach, why don't you start us out with some news? All right, um, start off talking about season tickets. Um, the general season tickets are sold out. So that was something we talked about a couple years ago. That there's going to come a time real soon that if you don't have a ticket, Brad, get you one because there's not going to be none available. And that time is now with the general, that general season ticket. Now, here's what is available. There's a few premium seats that we created more seats. Very few, less than 20 that, we're, that we've created. It's on that floor. Um, any single game ticket stuff, ticket offices will not be open for the games. Is that correct? On game day, ticket office will not be open. Uh, there will be some single tickets that will go on sale online, I guess, that week of that game if there's anything comes better, uh, comes available. Uh, and all I'm going to say, too, is this. If you, those who can't make it, those who bought season tickets and had tickets, those nights you can't be there, make sure you put somebody in those seats. Uh, find a way to put somebody in those seats. Questions about that, and, and Zach can help answer some of those questions too. Yes, sir, Mike. Rick, I, I don't want to dominate because we did talk a lot about this, but now that you just announced that, what's your immediate emotion knowing you get to play in front of a sellout? Well, you know, I, I think it's great for everybody. That's great. You know, everybody wins. Um, the city of Bowling Green wins. You know, helps to community in, in general. Western Kentucky wins. Uh, the excitement that, you know, coming to a game, to me, what it does for your students, uh, the students being able to come to a game and see a sellout and take some pride in that, have some pride in, in the atmosphere and, and the team they have. And again, as far as our team, you know, I know what it does for our team. Um, you know, the energy, that you can feed off of because there's, I mean, there's, there's nights and there's parts in games that you may not be playing very well. And basketball is such a game of emotion. And sometimes a crowd can get us going. Um, you know, a, a play and you feed off the energy in that building gets a team going sometimes. You know, even to say this, sometimes it has some things to do with what you coach based on the emotion of energy of the building. And that may sound different for some of you, but um, I've made decisions, hey, uh, sometimes to feed off of a building and trap it or press it more. You know, get a team go and feed, feed off that atmosphere. So from all those things, um, it's a win-win. And I would think everybody who shows up for a game um, much rather show up with the atmosphere like we're going to have her in Diddle how much more exciting it is for everybody. How much wants to help you in recruiting too, bringing in guys when they're gonna you know, sit there and watch games in four as opposed to you know, half empty? Well, I mean, Brad, you, you know the answer to that now. I mean, it's, you know, it just helps everybody. You know, if I'm gonna say this over and over, it's not about us, not about team, it takes us all. It takes everybody. It takes the students, it takes the fans, it takes our team. If everybody's showing up, giving their best, then it creates, creates an atmosphere and a better opportunity for everybody to be the best they can be. And no question, helps our team a bunch, which in turn, you know, your team's about players. It's all about players. And if you got, you know, atmosphere to help sell recruits, that helps your team too. Zach, you want anything else to these tickets? Yeah, pretty much it. That it? Top ones, yeah. Any other questions on tickets? I say keep selling. Fire Marshall's not in here yet, is he? <laughs> Keep selling. So, hey. <laughs> Before we get started on this year, reflect a little bit about, you, you know, you talk about energy created by fans. I think a lot of energy was created by the way you finished last year in the NIT. Could you just talk about the carryover of that? Well, you know, Probably back to last year at this first press conference, um, 
Everybody knew we had a brand new team. Literally, make sure I'm with one guy back, Justin Johnson had played. Everybody else was just new. Um, did we know for sure you know, how good that team was going to be? You know, absolutely not. We had some, you know, had some guys we didn't know. I mean, uh, Darius, you know, averages five or six points at Virginia. Uh, Dwight averages 1.7 at Kansas. Uh, Octavian was a a guy that a lot of people passed on that didn't know how good we could be, and we had two guys off the bench, two other freshmen. Uh, but the one thing I can look back, and I kept saying this, uh, we had great rhythm and great chemistry. And you get that by having good people. And um, those parts fit so well together last year. <clears throat> we had an experienced guy back in Justin, who was a, uh, you know, his first half of his season was trying to get him back to where he was at. And it was a struggle. He had to work extremely hard to do that. But still had one guy had been back, uh, the kind of person he was. You know, everybody could feed off of him a little bit. And, you know, it started early in the season. Uh, it probably, you know, we, we lose our home opener, don't we? Yeah, yeah, we lose the home opener. And for that team to go down to the Battle of Atlantis and kind of do what they did against a, a Purdue team, you know, looking back, it was Villanova was our first game. Is that correct? Yeah. You know, we had no we had no idea how they'd finish up. But if I remember correctly, for most of that first half, you guys there? Um, we led. I think we were down two or four at halftime, and them getting behind the second half got beat eight. Well, looking back on it, probably was pretty good. Then to bounce back that next night and play a Purdue team who was you know, a top 15 team in the country, um, four seniors, four seniors. Wasn't just top 15, four seniors. And do what they did and bounce back and beat a really experienced, good SMU team. Um, those guys deserve a lot of credit for that. And that was early in the season. I know naturally through a season, there's some games you like to have back. But as a whole, in the way that team finished up, we all know, you one play away from, one play away from, you know, winning the conference championship, and y'all heard me say this many a time, winning and losing is a fine line. It's a fine line. Um, but for those guys to bounce back up and go win the games they did, to finish on your question, to finish up the way we did, uh, beating a really good Boston College team, and the way we beat them, uh, then to be sent to uh, USC, who finished I guess second in the Pac-12, and Found a way to win that one. Uh, then the Oklahoma State game. I mean, you got you there? You there? Y'all, I don't have to tell you. Y'all, you don't know what that was. Anybody else there? Uh, you know, that's about as good as atmosphere you want to play in. You know, like I said, they didn't show up not expecting to go to New York at night. And for our team to um, withstand punch after punch, and after game, Zach gave me a stat, and I'm glad he didn't give it to me before the game. They were what 314 and eight the last 30 years, Zach, something like that. 214 and eight against non-conference teams in the last 30 years. So, so to answer your question, uh, uh, there's a lot of momentum from last year. Even though uh, I understand we got a new team this year, but we lost three of those go-to guys, Justin, Dwight, and Darius, and we lost a lot of different pieces. This team starts out literally with one starter back. And it's Tavion. That's it. Everybody else is new. And that's probably the work in progress we are right now, you know, uh, with basically four new starters. Um, there's a, you know, a couple guys besides Tavion who've been in the program. You know, Josh doesn't get eligible until the end of January, so he got a little bit of experience, uh, but he didn't get a lot. And he got none at the position he's playing at this year, the point guard spot. So that's an adjustment. You know, Jarrett was a set-out guy who was able to practice, but basically he's on the goal team. So there's a lot of new pieces, a lot of moving parts that we're still trying to figure out some things with them too. But I'll, I'll keep saying this. Um, you know, we have kids are working hard. We have good people. And um, knock on wood injuries, well, you know, we'll find a way to keep getting better with this team. How do you feel about being picked to win the league? You know, Chan, um, uh, 
don't think about it a lot. But when you pick up towards the top, you know, that's where you want to be picked. I mean, uh, what does it mean? You all know what it means. I'll be nice to you guys. I won't say who did the picking. I'm going to be real nice to you, Chad. I'm not going to say who did the picking. But, you know, um, you know it doesn't mean anything. Uh, we're glad it's there. What it is to other people respects our program, even with one starter back, to be able to pick us there. But, you know, you got to go play now. You, know, you get 18 games and you got a you know, non-conference schedule that, you know, uh, uh, we hope that will help prepare us. As you well know, you know, non-conference wise, we got a we got a bear of a schedule now, and that's opening up right off the bat. You know, and our choices were this. And this will answer your question right here a little bit more, Chad. Do we open up at home uh, and get a easy buy game in here and beat somebody 25 or 30 points? You know, we come in here and boy, everybody's happy and that's that happy. But I really don't know what we got for sure. Or do I want to go somewhere and get punched in the mouth? Go into a tough environment. Go into a team that, you know, is a uh, top 25 team. I'm surprised they're not higher. For those who don't know, they just went to Nevada. Who I saw Nevada's picked as high as third in the country in one poll, fifth in most polls. They just went into Nevada Sunday without their best player and one by 18. So that tells you how good they are. Uh, different style. Uh, they probably have as much excitement as they've had in a long time, their home opener. But you know, uh, as a coach, you know, I want to play against the best. As players, uh, it makes them better. Uh, players play up or down the competition expectations. That's why I've always said, hey, our goal every year is compete for a championship. If you walk in and say, we're not going to be very good this year, we're going to, you know, it's a rebuilding year. Well, that's a mindset your players have. I never believed it and never accepted it and never wanted my team to feel that. Uh, so our goals are the same every year. Uh, walk in and uh, try to play against the best. And you guys can look down that schedule and see what we're doing with some games. Uh, you know, we, yes, yes, you want to win them all. We all know that. But winning all the games sometimes, if it don't happen, don't mean it make, doesn't make your team better. I'll walk out some losses feeling better about my team and I'll do some wins because I'll know a little bit more about them. There's some wins sometimes, uh, you don't feel very good about the win. There's some losses sometimes. I can walk out of there and know, hey, I found out something about our team. Our team got better tonight. And it'll make us better long term. And that's what we want. As a coach, as a player, as a fan. Now, how about sports writers? Would y'all rather us play cupcakes or play good competition? Good competition. Good competition. Good. So you'll be my, nice to me when that good team beats us in, right, Mike? Yes, sir. <laughs> to go back to bouncing off being picked to win the league, even though you said you don't care much about it, do you talk to your players about it just to kind of let them know that teams are coming at Haven't said one word about it. Don't have to. You guys, you know, it's different than it used to be. You know, the minute that came out, I'm sure every player had it. Just the social media world we live in, uh, I don't talk about it at all. Will there be a point that I may say something about it? Yeah, not right now because it's, you know, it doesn't mean anything right now. These guys know our mindset and, you know, how my mindset is on that anyway. Rick, yes, sir, Mike. said since you've been here that the most important game is the next game. The next game, I realize, is an exhibition game, but still, what do you want to see out of your players and get out of this game against Campbellsville? Well, I'm going to be a little bit back, like you all, too. I'm, um, I'm going to be watching and learning. I'm going to be learning, trying to figure it, figure it out a little bit, figure out some more strengths and some weaknesses of some players. Um, you know, some guys can do it at 3 o'clock, which guys do it better at 7 o'clock, you know? Then finding, finding out, you know, by Deshaun Murray, trying to continue to figure out you know, all the things, how we utilize him, uh, the best visibilities, make him the best, it makes the team the best. Um, and you all know this with Josh, it's going to be the first time he's ever lined up playing point guard against somebody else. 
So there's a lot of little things that we can all will learn. You know, the biggest things that I'm always um, looking at, Mike, is the things that we can control, is how hard we play, and basically the effort and attitude, where we at with all that. Details of things we'll continue to get better at if we play, as we move forward. And there's a lot of, because there's a lot of moving parts and new parts, there's a lot of things we got to continue to get better at. And, and get a rhythm, get a rhythm how we're playing. You know, we're far from a rhythm right now. Rick, I remember last year you talked a lot about Jared and how much he impressed you both as a player and a person. And we've kind of gotten to see so far in the scrimmages how good of a shooter he really is. Is he? What is he really going to add to that starting five and to this team as a whole? How do you kind of well, I think the first thing he adds, he's a, uh, he's a terrific person. Leads every day on and off the court consistently. Uh, there's never no ups and downs. There's never no highs and lows. Uh, he comes to practice every day the same way, every drill the same way. Uh, I've yet to see a bad day from him. Um, he seems to be able to step up and make shots. That's what he does best. Uh, he's done it pretty consistent most days. Uh, I think he's worked hard on the year he set out, putting the ball on the floor. I think when he first got here, that was uh, some limitations he's had. So I know he's tried to work hard in the last year on his weaknesses. He's gotten better at it. Uh, but, you know, I just think he's a, he, he adds a lot of character. Uh, you know, a guy that uh, will be uh, calm in moments. I don't see him emotionally changing much within games. And that's kind of, you got to have some guys like that uh, that's pretty consistent with their emotions. And I think he's one of those guys. Does he kind of remind you of Darius in that sense? Yeah, they're different players. Um, could be a lot of the same demeanors, um, you know, uh, quality people, um, you know, just different kind of, different kind of players. Uh, but again, high, high quality people. Got a bunch of guys playing professional basketball right now. Is that something you also saw recruits a chance to pick their game at the next level? You know, you know Chad, you know, the game's changed so much. Um, you know, all these guys, everybody who puts on shoes nowadays dream of playing professionally somehow. And that's good. They, sh they should. They should. You know, and the thing about basketball, different than the other sport, there's so many opportunities professionally. You know, football and baseball don't have the opportunities basketball does. I mean, we got the NBA. We've got 40 foreign countries, whatever there is. How many foreign countries are there, Brad? Like with leagues or just like in the world? Leagues. World. Anybody know? Okay. Anybody have an answer to that one? I think you're close, Coach. Close? 40? Okay. And most of those leagues in there have two different leagues in them. Have A League and a B League. Then we got the G League and the NBA. So there's so many opportunities. I know if I'm a player and I'm good enough to play at this level, hey, I'm going to try to make a living and play in basketball. Some level, why shouldn't you? Well, so in turn, you know, there's a lot that goes with that. You know, everybody wants to do it, but here's what it takes. Are you willing to be a professional every day in your life? You know, it's a business, and that's not easy for everybody. Uh, but naturally, the kind of kids that you got to have to compete and win at the level we want to win at, um, you've got to be able to, you know, uh, show them opportunity in the situation. And one good thing about West Kentucky, and I believe this, you know, being in the SEC for what it was, 24 years, I've seen a lot of young men make decisions sometimes based on what sounds good and looks good. But when you get there, the most important thing is not there to sing. And that's opportunity. And I think that's one thing we can sell for the right young man that have an opportunity to go somewhere where you can be, you know, impactful as a freshman and go win as much as anybody in the country. You know, it's a natural and easy sell. And I think that's what we have at Western Kentucky for the right young man. You know, play in front of a sold-out arena, great basketball tradition, Bowling Green being a great town, beautiful campus, place to get a good education. You know, what else is there? And again, kids make decisions on basketball, whether people want to realize that or not. And there's, there's students who make decisions where they go to college at based on athletic experience, whether it's at a football game or a basketball game. Students do that. But basketball players for sure make decisions based on 
most of them, most of them. Uh, working, I go and have an opportunity to play, win, and a place where I can make a name for myself a little bit and have a chance to, you know, maybe have a pro career. Coach, we haven't talked about the style of play much that you want to do for this year's team. Since there are some new players, will it be similar or different place you hope it to be from last year? You know, Dominic, I, I like to have the same style every year. If we can score in transition, I like never have to set up and run play. Let's go score in transition. But that's not going to happen. But that's our first goal. If we can get off that backboard and get it down and score, uh, we're going to try to do it every time. If not, you know, it's pretty consistent. I'm going to drive it to the paint. I'm going to throw it to the paint and shoot some threes as long as our makeup and mixture of our team is is that way. Um, and so pretty consistent way we want to play. I guess we'll tweak, we'll tweak and adjust to players' abilities. You know, what they can do is we continue to learn about some of them. You know, uh, you know, figuring out Charles a little bit more in some games. Exactly, you know, where's what's he do best consistently offensively? Same way with Deshaun. And again, we'll adjust some things. We'll adjust some things as we go. Um, that's why I'm saying we're, we're working in progress, trying to figure out this rhythm a little bit. But while we're doing all that, I think the key thing you got to be able to do, you got to play hard, you got to defend, you got to rebound. Um, um, hopefully, that can keep you, get you over some humps some nights. Yes, sir, Mike. Up to this point, late October, what's practice been like this preseason compared to a year ago? And I'm thinking back when you yeah. had seven guys to practice a year ago this time. You know, for the first time in my career last year, it made me totally adjust practice. I had to. You know, it's either practice the way we want to practice and maybe try to get on that bus or plane with five people. We had seven. So, had to make a decision, and we got to get on that plane with seven people. So I had to cut back, cut back a little the physical stuff, the physicalness of it. But I think the good thing about that was this: a Darius and a Dwight had been through it; they were experienced guys, so it was easier to do than having a young guy who hadn't been through it and doing that. So Justin, being a senior, um, you know Monte was a fourth year junior. So we had some experience, some guys could handle some things. The difference in this team is just a lot of new parts. Don't have that experience of that. Uh, Deshaun is the one fifth year guy. Um, outside that, who's the other seniors? Monte, and he's not eligible to December. So is that right, my only seniors, Deshaun? Um, then you just got some new parts, you know, even though I say Josh has been here, uh, it's adjustment for him. You know, Merrick's, Merrick's been around, uh, Jake's been around, um, uh, Tulu's had his foot problems. So as a young guy, it's been adjustment for him. And, you know, we've been without, been without, um, uh, Jeremiah, Matt's a new guy. So just a lot of new pieces, man. Rick, how much are your guys looking forward to finally playing someone other than each other? Yeah, I'm sure they're ready for that. I'm sure they're ready to, you know, it's probably been a, it's been a pretty good um, uh, long fall. We started practice, Zach, when did we start? 27th, 28th? Yes. When was something like that? They moved practice up three or four or five days. So, um, and listen, as a coach, I understand that too. You know, it gets to be a long. We've 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 probably adjusted practice a little bit from scrimmage and a little bit more normal because of two things: just um, let some guys play. You can drill and drill, but you got to play the game. You got to play that game. Games played up and down, not played in drills. Um, but um, it gets to be a mental drag over a long period of time. You know, I think as a coach, you got to sometimes feel that and sense that and try to do things that are uh, a little bit different 
maybe keep them guessing a little bit in practice what you're doing a little bit so, don't, so it doesn't get so stale. But again, there's a lot of things we got to learn. I mean, we're, we've got a lot of things to just keep getting better at. Um, and probably zone is one of those things that normally early in the year you never as good playing against because you don't work on as much. But we all know our first official game, we're going to probably see 30 or 40 minutes of zone out down the road. So it makes you have to have a little bit more awareness to that. Okay, one or two more and then we'll let the players go. Yes, sir. The, uh, I know it's early, but based on your personnel, you, you talked a little bit about style of play offensively. What do you think the capabilities defensively of this, of this team might be? I think we have more, I think we have more abilities than last year. Uh, I do believe that. Uh, you know, Josh is a big old guard out there defensively. I think once he really changes, it's not about his ability, it's about his <laughs> mindset. Once that mindset gets right, uh, he can he can create some um, some problems out there. Tavion will be good. Jared's, Jared's a smart player, anticipates well. I think Deshaun's got some ability. Merrick brings some quickness and defensive ability. Charles being a young guy, but I think his defense is ahead of his offense, but got pretty good instincts, even though you know, Dwight was good. Um, you know, I think that um, you know, a lot of those young guys on that bench, Delano, Matt, those guys, it's, it's a learning curve for them. Uh, hopefully Jake's should be better. And I don't know who else I'm not talking about. But Mustafa, you know, you know hopefully that, you know, what happened to him last year and not getting eligible to January or almost February again into January that uh, he'll have a chance to free up a little bit mentally. I think we have more abilities, for sure. I think that we have more quickness. Uh, we want to be able to, you know, guard the basketball. We'll still change some defenses. I think we have the flexibility of some more depth this year, for sure. We can probably withstand a injury uh, maybe a little bit better than we could last year. Uh, we don't want to have any. But uh, I think we have more ability to do that some. Last question. One more from anybody? Give me one more. Chad, give me one more. It's on you, buddy. Uh, who is a, a player in your mind that maybe we're not talking about a lot right now who you think could really improve my year? Well, it's real, real easy for me. Big one. Real easy. Um, he really hadn't played yet. He hadn't had a chance to. Practice a lot, uh, um, and that's Galen Smith. Uh, uh, again, he's he's one of those guys in recruiting. You've heard me say this. There's, there's no science to it. You just got to be right more than you are wrong. Sometimes you got to get lucky. And we got lucky. Coach Shu did a great job uh, it, with this young man. He's basically an unrecruited guy, 16 kid from Mississippi, moved to Hawaii, fell through the cracks. Grew six inches from his sophomore year to his senior year. Uh, because that he has good skills for a post guy now. A great feel. Uh, 3.9, five student, whatever it is, too. A great mother and father, great work ethic. All, all the things that when you're a coach, you can look at a player. Big guys, you got to be able to project them all. It's not what they are, it's what they become. Well, you got to be able to project what they become based on, based on character and work ethic. Character and work ethic, that's two things. If you've got ability to go with it, it's easy for me to project those guys. And so that's why it's easy for me to project him. Uh, I don't feel uh, bad saying it ever and bragging on him um, because he's at the top of the chart with work ethic and character. Then you put ability with it. It's just getting him back. You know, if he was a junior, we probably just keep him in shape enough we could play him, but he's not. He's a freshman, which means he's got to get some reps somehow. And we got to be able to keep him healthy enough through those reps that we can get him in some games. You know, how much? He missed all fall. He had that foot in a boot for eight or ten weeks. Basically, since practice, he's been held out. Just done a lot of five on O, got him back a few days here or there, uh, but hadn't done a lot. But. Uh, he's the one guy we're not talking about can really help his basketball team if he's healthy. Is that it? Good? Guys, I'll see you Tuesday night. Thanks, good. Tuesday Thanks, night. Good. Ted, Tuesday night? Sure, maybe I'll stop by. Tuesday night. <laughs>
I got you. I got you. Tuesday night. I don't know that they'll take us on.